So in this video, we're gonna discuss water's importance to living organisms. We're gonna see that water really is everywhere on this planet. You certainly know about the oceans and the lakes and rivers, and even clouds of water vapor that are kind of above us. But I really wanna convince you that water is, is the major uh, molecule inside of all living organisms as well. So certainly you could think about the cytoplasm of a single celled creature. Uh, cytoplasm is really just a watery environment with stuff dissolved within it. Um, that would be the same constituent of our own cells as well. Um, then if you also think about the inside of your body, there's water flowing through the blood vessels of your body. Well, blood is really just water with some cells um, in, in it. Um, there's even a lot of water in between your blood vessels and your actual body cells. Uh, we call that the extracellular fluid. And that's really just water as well. So there's tons of water inside of living creatures. Um, and so we're gonna try and think about why that's so important. What is that water doing? Um, first, we're gonna cover water's molecular structure and kind of introduce some terms that'll be important for us later. Um, but I'm primarily then gonna focus on the four properties of water. I want you to be able to at least name two of them and, and also be able to justify why that property is important to some kind of group of living organisms. So let's get into it. Water is a very interesting molecule. Um, certainly you know it as H2O, or two hydrogens chemically bonded with an oxygen. So it turns out, for reasons why you'll discuss in chemistry later, uh, the, the electrons that make up that chemical bond, which are negative, maybe you remember, um, those electrons are actually a little closer to the oxygen than they are to the hydrogens, and that's gonna make the oxygen part of the molecule kind of negative. This symbol just means kind of. Whereas the hydrogens are kind of positive, and so that gives the water molecule, um, for our purposes, just kind of two different charges on both sides of it. Um, any molecule that has either full or partial charge, we're going to use the word polar to describe it later. That's going to be a pretty important term. So water is a polar molecule, and that's going to have important consequences because anytime water interacts with another molecule that has charge, since it has a negative and a positive side, it's going to be able to attract to the opposite charge of that molecule. So certainly water can attract itself, for example. Um, the negative and positive sides kind of click together like negative and positive magnets. And we'll kind of call those uh, bonds hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are strong enough to be important, but weak enough that they can be broken pretty easily as well. We're gonna see hydrogen bonds in molecules like DNA later. Um, so that, I typically use dashed lines to represent hydrogen bonds because they're much weaker than the, than the bonds that make up, um, the, the, the bonds that are within a molecule versus the bonds between water molecules. Okay, so uh, as it turns out, uh, water can hydrogen bond with itself up to four times each molecule uh, because its negative side can attract two and its positive side can attract two. Okay, so that's kind of just a really brief introduction in, into the molecular structure of water. Now let's talk about the properties. The first property I like to sometimes just call stickiness. You're welcome to think of water as being a sticky molecule. Uh, the fancy term is that it's adhesive or it shows adhesion to other molecules, anything else with charge. Um, and it's also very cohesive with itself. Co often means together um, or with, so it's cohesive with itself. It sticks well to itself as well. Why is that gonna be important for living organisms? Well, especially for plants, it's gonna be crucial for them to be able to bring water from their roots up the stem to leaves. Um, and as it turns out that they're gonna be able to kind of pull on the entire column of water um, from the top, if, if, if water sticks together well and sticks to the sides of walls well, then it's gonna be easy to bring it up for photosynthesis. Uh, why is that important for all living organisms? Because we talked about in ecology, how producers really are the, the foundation of energy um, availability for all living organisms. Okay, water resists temperature change, property number two. Um, because we are a mostly water planet, uh, planets when they spin around their own axis are facing the sun half the time and they're facing very cold space the other half of the time. Uh, so it's really important for the, our planet to support life. Um, that water, since it changes temperature slow, slow, so slowly, it, it sort of picks up heat from the sun when it's facing the sun, um, but then doesn't cool down very easily when it faces away from the sun. 
Um, it creates a, a sort of a range of temperatures. This is just a very, very broad average temperature. I realize that there are different temperatures on different parts of the planet in different seasons. Um, but maybe um, a range of temperatures that's much more conducive for the possibility of life than a planet like Mercury. Mercury, as it turns out, is made mostly of metal, which changes temperatures very easily. And so um, its temperature extremes just are impossible to support life. So um, that's why a lot of astronomers um, looking for life on other planets would be looking for a water-based planet. Okay, third property, uh, water dissolves things well. Um, why is that gonna be important for life? Because you need to be able to, to distribute things well throughout your cell, for example, um, with the watery cytoplasm, or we can use the water in our blood to kind of dis, uh, distribute things that we want to send to our body cells. Um, lots of things like sugars or other um, uh, nutrients dissolve well in the water of our blood, and so we just use the water to carry things. As it turns out we have red blood cells because a, a molecule like oxygen um, doesn't have electrical charge, like this uh, example. Uh, why can water dissolve many things? Water can dissolve anything with electrical charge because the negative oxygen um, would be attracted to the positive particle that we're showing here, and so it surrounds it. Dissolving is just surrounding. Um, water could dissolve anything with, with negative charge as well, because something that's negative um, would just be surrounded by the positive hydrogens. Um, and, and, but a molecule like oxygen or another molecule like oil um, maybe you've seen that oil doesn't dissolve in water. Why not? Because oil, as it turns out, is nonpolar. Um, it has no electrical charge at all, and so the positive and negative waters attract each other, but they don't want to surround the oil at all because there's nothing to be attracted to. And so there are a few particles that don't dissolve well in water that we might have specialists help carry in our body. Okay, and then the fourth property, ice is less dense than liquid water. For most other substances, the solid form is more compact and therefore more dense. Um, and so the, the, the solid form would like uh, sink in the liquid form. Uh, why is that important for life? Because in areas where it gets cold enough in the air, um, kind of above the water source, uh, air can get colder a lot easier than water. So when it gets so cold that the water at the surface freezes, if that uh, uh, surface ice were to sink, um, then you could see how that would expose new liquid water to the surface and then it would freeze. You might have the whole body of water freeze. Um, as it turns out, since uh, just the surface water um, freezes and then floats on top of the liquid water, it might insulate it from the colder air and prevent the whole body of water from freezing. So um, that enables something like ice fishing to take place as shown here. Um, and for our purposes, just makes it possible for aquatic life to uh, continue living. So we talked about water's molecular structure. We introduced the term polar versus nonpolar as kind of terms that will be important later. And we spent most of our time discussing the properties of water and why they're important for life.